So let's have a look at the Atlas of Pidgin and Creole Language Structures Online, which is this utterly delightful website right here. And as you can see, there's a lot of different stuff going on in the menus, and so this gives you sort of an overview of what the website contains. And let's maybe look at some of the languages that are going on here. So when you click on that, you can just sort of see a snapshot of the 76 languages that are currently included in this database, and you can see them listed here sort of uh, just in general organized, I think it looks like over by these two columns over here. But let's say you're looking for a specific one, like let's say we want to look for, oh, I don't know, Tok Pisin. You can type in here, Tok, and there it is, Tok Pisin, right? So you can search through by using these columns up here, uh, or you can just uh, scroll through and as your heart desires to find what you want. So let's maybe take a look at Tok Pisin as an example. So when you click on a language, it gives you an overview of what that language's background is and history, and it gives you then a list of all of these different features and how they're implemented within this particular language. These are primary features. You can also see that there are segments, which refers to individual sounds, uh, what the IPA chart looks like. For those of you who have taken a phonology course and know how to interpret these, you can see which sounds are used, as well as some sociolinguistic features. We're going to be concerned in this class mostly with primary features because that's just uh, our purview. Uh, but you can, you can see then a list, and let's for example look at, when we look at this particular feature, the order of subject, object, and verb, right? So it looks like if you look under the value that took PC and uses subject, verb, object all the time because that circle is completely filled in. So if we click on that, it'll give you a little bit more information about the distribution across languages. You can actually see that quite a lot use that particular one, lots of red full circles. But uh, let's go back. And you can just see, if I want to know more about what Tokpisin is doing, you can see examples of Tokpisin using subject, verb, object. Uh, maybe let's go down to one where we don't have a complete circle. So how about the order of adjective and noun? And you can see here, the value is modifying adjective precedes noun, but only some of the time. And the rest of the time, the modifying adjective follows the noun, right? So it seems like we have some variation as indicated by the incomplete uh, circles here. So the yellow one, it looks like it's maybe, I don't know, a little more than 50% in that yellow right there, of the adjective preceding the noun, and over here, the adjective following the noun, right? It occurs the rest of the time. They give, they give you some examples and some more information. Now, suppose you want to know, not just about Tokpisin, but let's, in fact, we want to know what about the order of adjective and noun across all the languages. That's where you can click on the feature itself here, and, and it will give you the distribution across the languages in the database. You can see there are two values. The modifying adjective precedes the noun, which is the yellow ones, or the modifying adjective follows the noun, which are the purple ones. And you can sort of see the lovely map right here where we have all kinds of distributions. But the thing that's a, and most interesting uh, for sort of getting a sense of how often certain things happen are these columns over here, right? So this is exclusive, shared, and all. So what that means is if we want to know Modifying adjective precedes noun. How many languages of the 76 here exclusively have the modifying adjective precede the noun? That means that it's going to be an entire yellow circle. How many full yellow circles you know, do we have here? And the answer is 34, right? Now what shared means is that, oh, they allow the modifying adjective to precede the noun as one of the options. They have varied abilities. In fact, Tokpi and we saw allows both, so we're going to have a little shaded one here. And that's 35, right? Now, what about modifying adjective follows the noun? Well, there are seven who only allow the modifying adjective to follow the noun. You can see they're sort of clustered in this region, except there's one over here. So there's seven of those. But again, there are 35 that allow either order, right? And so if you want to, if you're just sort of interested in this all column, it immediately says how many languages allow the modifying adjective to precede a noun either as the only or as one of two, or one of the options allowed, that's 69, 34 plus 35. How many languages allow the modifying adjective to follow the noun, either as the only one, or as one of the possible options, 
the answer is 42, right? And then this covers the entirety of the 76 languages that are in the database. And if you're curious about any particular ones, you're like, well, you know, what does this language do? Or what does that language do? You can look down here, you can sort here by which ones, maybe if you're interested in saying, let's see some ones where the adjective follows the noun, it's thinking for a moment, and I'll give you, for example, our Tok Pisin, which does it some of the time. But here's one, this Papia Christang, which does it all the time, right? Um, so if you want to jump quickly, again, these are, this is features, if you want to jump, qu jump quickly to just like what kind of features are in this database, we just did adjective and noun, but let's look at this one, subject, object, and verb, where you're actually looking at more than two options, right? So you can see here that we have a variety of options. We have, in fact, six of them, all possible orderings of subject, verb, and object. And if you look here, again, if we sort of glance here, you can see there's a predominant order that's showing up, right, which is this guy. So again, let's let's sort of practice reading uh, this table right here. So if I ask you how many languages exclusively use subject, verb, object order, the answer is 61. How many languages exclusively use subject, object, verb, it's one. And how many languages exclusively use any of these other guys, the answer is zero. Now, what have I asked you? How many languages allow object, subject, verb, this one right here, as one of the options, either exclusively or shared? And you look along this row and you're like, well, okay, that's the all column. How many allow it either exclusively, zero, but shared as one of the options you can use? Well, three of them allow object, subject, verb as one of the options you can use, so there's three. And you can, again, this is how you're going to read this. These are how many allow it as either exclusively or shared, and the total is the all column. And so you can see in general, again, subject verb object is wildly popular, uh, either exclusively or as one of the options that you can use. And these other ones are much less popular. Subject object verb is the next sort of most popular one, is one of the options you can use. It's rarely used as the exclusively the only order. And all the rest, you only get it when you have some other one also being allowed. They're only shared. They're only possible options. They're not ever the only option. Right? So interesting patterns. And you can, again, look at any of these features listed here just to get the, the spread across these different pigeons and creels and see what across all of these different features are actually the, the trends, right? the things that keep reappearing, because that's really what's of interest when we think about what's causing, especially the creoles, to form the structures that they do.